What's up? I'm Kristen. This is my YouTube channel, and this is Maggie, who is not usually on my YouTube channel. <laughs> okay, who are you? I was born <laughs> in the last century. My name is Maggie, and I go to Minerva schools. And I will have a degree, fingers crossed, in three months that says natural sciences. It might also say cells and organisms. Yeah, I don't know if that's actually on the degree. So Maggie. So Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like really sweaty from rushing this up. <laughs> first things first. Which row slash column did you do? Is it the middle row? Oh dang, I have no idea. I think it's the middle one. All it's the courses end with four. Because it's one four four one oh, five four yeah, one yeah, six yeah. four. Yeah, middle row. Okay. Middle row, cells and organisms. Can you explain to us what each of those classes is? We can start Actually, with... it's third row. No, because third row is sixes. But it's NS 112. 110 oh. is first row, 111 is middle row, 112 is third row. No, NS has a mi mismatch on the four courses. <laughs> How do you know that? Okay, what was the question? Uh, tell us about 144. What is it? 144, genetic blueprint to organism. Here's the screenshot of the name of the course. It's been a few years, honestly. I feel like I should have prepped, but... <laughs> I think it's interesting to see what you actually remember. Um, <laughs> is the wow, science of is, learning effective? Yeah, this <laughs> so space genetics. practice is really stressing me out. Do you okay. remember like what the assignments were like, or like what yeah. classes you enjoyed? Okay, so yeah. tell us about okay. like what kind of stuff you did. So I can tell you about my final project. Okay, which I named after a Moana song because that's what I was listening to when I wrote it. Okay, um, what Moana song? how far I'll go. There's like only one. That was only the Google Doc. The actual assignment was about a gene, and no, I don't remember the gene, but it causes a, a disease. G-E-N-E. -E. Heck yeah. <laughs> uh, as in genetics. Yes. Um, it causes a <laughs> rare disease, it causes birth defects in, um, well, I suppose all populations, but it's more common in this one particular a really isolated population because that's how genetics works. Yeah. And I basically talked about how it could be detected using more modern like genetic screenings and what earlier detection could mean for treatment. Mm. Mm -hmm. How much of the class is about those same concepts? I mean, <laughs> yeah, a lot of the class is what, how do we collect genetic data? So we talked about like genome-wide studies, um, mm -hmm. where you're sampling genetics from a lot of the population, and then how you use that information to build up a database of knowledge, mm -hmm. and then you can do 23andMe and figure out what your individual genetics mean. Yeah. Okay, cool. So just lots of genetics stuff. A lot of genetics stuff. Society yeah. and individual. Yeah. Okay, cool. Seems like a good rundown. What's the middle course? 154. 154 is life's chemistry. The Which... shortest title of the class of Minerva potentially. <laughs> really? Some of them are. Yeah, that's true. Ridiculous. <laughs> Do you have a chemical physics is only one word? But it's the most ridiculous word. <laughs> Not taken geobiochemophysics. <laughs> Insert the meme that I made two years ago about geobiochemophysics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, life's chemistry is a super cool class, mostly because aren't genetics chemistry of life? Yeah, everything is chemistry, which I definitely didn't realize until Prof Kern was like, biology is chemistry, chemistry is biology. Um, it's it's a cool class. Not to mention Prof Kern is like so smart. So what sort of life topics and chemistry topics did you actually go over? Okay, so the first few weeks I was big time struggle busing because <laughs> my 10th grade chemistry did not prepare me for college chemistry. Yeah. So we talked about like small level chemistry. Okay. <laughs> Bonds and elements and the relationship between different things and how that affects more macro scale. And then we got into what does that mean in a cell? Different polarization and parts of the cell attract or repel different things. So mm -hmm. you have to really get like pH and stuff that I've never gotten before. It was yeah. cool. Um, and then we talked about it at a macro level, like what does it mean that glycolysis happens and mm. You turn 
you take sugars and oxygens and yeah. So we did some fermentation oh. as our LBA. Yeah, yeah. And I made some sauerkraut and it was the coolest thing ever. Yeah. That I've yet to repeat. But then yeah, so we made sauerkraut, added co curricular, and then took it home, fermented it for a few weeks and then ate it, and it was not super gross, but my roommates didn't really like the smell. <laughs> and it really grew on me. The whole fermented cabbage thing is, is coming along. Oh no. I didn't record properly. Oh duh. It'll be fine. But basically you need those mitochondria. No, actually that's not, that's not how that works. But yeah, yeah chemistry is super cool. Yeah. That makes sense. So kind of going from like individual atoms interacting to the cell to how that affects the person. And gut microbiology is really the future. Yes, I've heard multiple NS students speak about this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Eat yogurt. And fermented things. <laughs> Which is yogurt. Yeah, and it'll be good for you. Fermented beverages. Kombucha. Good for you. Fermented barley beer less good for you i'm actually not sure how it works interesting because i've always heard that like one glass of red wine a day is good for you yeah i've heard that too i don't know why maybe fermentation <laughs> 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 sounds good yeah. what is the last one okay this is also the super most coolest class ever <laughs> ns-164 drug to development actually that's not what it's called it's changed names it's solutions from and for life Mm, yes. But it's basically drug development pipeline 101. <laughs> How did that class start? I don't remember. Do you remember assignments from that class? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Basically because everyone that took it really liked it and now in my tutorial we're basically recreating or we're doing 102 or however yeah, like normal colleges yeah. number things. Yeah. So one of the assignments was explore the drug development pipeline for a specific drug of your choice, which was cool. How many different like drugs or types of drugs did you talk about? Oh gosh. Um, was it like a lot or was it like three? <laughs> no, I would say it was a lot. A lot, yeah. okay. So you yeah. know about a lot of different kinds of drugs? Superficially. Okay. Yeah. But you know and then about like the maybe process. two in depth. In depth, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And then you realize, like, the process, yeah, is super, everything's the same. Yeah. Like, step one is find a person with a disease. Step two, what is wrong with them? Step three, no, but, like, really, what is wrong? <laughs> is it because a protein is not made? Is that a genetic thing? Or is it, um, like, chemical that's missing? Or is it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so how can we fix that? Yeah. Is, like, steps four through seven, and then, <laughs> or not really. Yeah. Um, but then there's all the... We also talked about uh, regulation and like safety trials. Mm. Um, and what the happens ethics in a of that. safety trial? <laughs> I mean, so to get a drug approved, it takes a lot of steps, which is one reason why drugs are really expensive. Also, because the steps before that cost a lot of money. Research is so expensive. Yeah, research and it's development insane. is crazy. You know, it's like a hundred dollars <laughs> for a bottle this big of cow serum. Cow serum is what you grow cells in. <laughs> Or sometimes, depends on the cells. Sometimes you need goat serum. What do you mean by cow serum? Okay, so I grew some <laughs> cells one summer. We um, took cells, HeLa cells, Henrietta Lacks, from one petri dish and put them in a new petri dish, but to feed these new ones, we had to give them fetal bovine serum. So you take like proteins and stuff that's produced by fetal cow cells and you use them to grow these. But how do you get it? I don't really know that part. It seems very troubling. I don't think it is. I think okay. it's like all grown in culture, but like beginning from cow, cow cells. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. No, I don't think it's as ethically dubious as it sounds. It sounds really dubious. <laughs> yeah. No. I should have probably done this first, but like the core course for that is evolution, isn't it? Yeah. Evolution on multiple scales is the name. Yeah. And so that one's more like the macro level biology. This or... is one of my complaints about the biology row. The classes don't really build on each other. Yeah. Um, so evolution, like, yeah, it's related to genetics and chemistry and like 
yeah, using these things in life, so the solutions class, but they end up being really separate. Yeah, we kind of got an introduction to like, what is a GWAS study? It's sampling an entire population's genetics, and then that did come back when we took an S144 genetics, but yeah, evolution from and for, no, across scales? I, no I don't know. Evolution on many scales uh, was more what is evolution, how do we study it, and um, So like, yeah. yeah, that doesn't directly feed into the concentration? No. Okay. I mean, in the sense that everything is related to everything, it feeds in. Yeah, but it's but, not really like a bio 101 yeah. at all. Okay. So I'm really glad I had, like, my chemistry in high school, not good. My biology in high school, really good. That's um, good. Which has been and continues to be super helpful. Let's do, what are your tutorials and how slash how much do they relate to your concentration? Okay, so there's not a lot of options for NS life science tutorials. Last semester, there was an epigenetics tutorial taught by Dean Chandler, which everyone who came out of it said, like, wow, first of all, she's super knowledgeable on the topic and they talked about some really cool things. But I wasn't in that one. This semester I'm taking Bio Origins of Bioengineering and Biotechnologies, BBB. And yeah, it's, it's kind of building on the Solutions from and for Life class. So right now we're mm -hmm. talking about, we did an original introduction to like basic biology concepts, um, and we talked about bacteria and viruses, the small scale things that we use to like hack our biology. I heard using the term biohacking today. Yeah, biohacking apparently is a dangerous term because it means that some people will like expose themselves to things and they're like, I'm biohacking, when really that's not, that's not a good research idea. supported and yeah. very sketchy. But oh, good. conceptually, like I like the word biohacking. It kind of <laughs> describes what I'm thinking, but do it in a safe and peer-reviewed way, I guess. Yeah, so we're doing pharmaceuticals right now and then we're going to switch into... What do we name the unit? It's like manufacturing or something. So we're mm -hmm. going to talk about GMOs and What's I that? think we might do a class on like beauty products mm -hmm. um, and how that would be cool. basic biology informs yeah, like cosmetic development. A little bit of dermatology. Yeah, dabbling. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And, and your my other tutorial is cross-listed with social sciences cognition row and it is stress and dying and i love it so <laughs> much because what is like yeah. the structure of like the units in that class so stress and dying we did an intro unit on the biology of stress which is so cool <laughs> <laughs> it is so cool so that going forward we can have an understanding of it's neuronal signaling to yes. biochemical, not biochemical, just chemical signaling um, that has biological effects. <laughs> and then the rest of the class is stress and fill in the blank disease. So we're going to do three different diseases and talk about how stress is related to the development of that disease and then the progression of the disease. Which diseases? So we've done one week of breast cancer. We have another week of that, and then we're going to do Alzheimer's and multiple sclerosis. It's being, it's happening again next year. Oh, wow. It's been confirmed. That yeah. sounds like a pretty good tutorial. Do you want to comment upon your capstone and how it relates to your coursework? Capstone. I make it optional because <laughs> capstone um, is a contentious uh, topic. <laughs> so the deal with capstone is I'm in this super cool capstone group mm -hmm. with a bunch of other science gals and I really just enjoy hearing about their projects. I also enjoy my project. I can say that now that I've submitted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my project is about conditioning, strength training in Irish dance and how it can be used to reduce injury. Okay. If it can be used. I have to continue saying if because the research is very like, it's not been studied yeah. and I don't have IRB approval to actually study it. So yeah. Please, someone, please, someone, <laughs> figure that out someone for me. Someone study it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. So building on, like, applied bio type stuff? Yeah, it's, that's one of the bigger problems I'm having, <laughs> and it's not really related to my previous LOs, yeah. so. It is science-y. They let me do it, so. which is kind of amazing, <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. You only need five LOs. Yeah, I know. Thank goodness. <laughs> I have three and I'm gonna make up the other two. <laughs> Great. Ooh, ooh, 
NS270, research methods. That's where all my LOs for my capstone are coming from. Research methods was supposed to be, like, a prerequisite to do a master's. Integrated master's. Yeah, do it at the same time as your fourth year of your undergrad and, like, finish with both the master's and the bachelor's in four years. But everyone pretty much said that's a lot of work and so it hasn't happened yet. (laughs) But Maggie did take that research methods, which was also, like, kind of marketed (laughs) to us as, like, useful if you wanted to go into research or if you were thinking of doing researchy stuff for your capstone. It's also marketed as... (laughs) <laughs> it's only like half a credit each yeah. semester. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's only so cool. half a credit both semesters of junior year. And you kind of have to do both to get the full four credits. Otherwise, you have to figure out a weird way to get just two credits some other way. Because uh, it's like the only class besides the capstone, which is also half a credit each mm. semester junior year that's like that and it's about how to do research yeah yeah. maggie recommends it it was really fun (laughs) maggie is the only person i've heard recommend it (laughs) actually fran talks good well about it the first semester was kind of it's like really theoretical yeah like what is research in a theory sense which i can't care about i just not interested but then the second semester was cool i wanted to also talk about what lab experiences you have had and sort of the whole fact that Minerva doesn't have labs for NS people. So you grew some cells once. I grew some cells once. Is that all of the research you've really done? Yeah. First year I shadowed um, at a clinic in San Francisco back when I was thinking I really wanted to be a doctor. And then the summer between second and third year, I grew some cells, Mm -hmm. which was super cool. Then... What was the lab? that you grew cells for, and how did you get to grow cells for them? I do not have a good answer for that. It's like the tiny college in my hometown. Okay, and I just that's kind of the like, answer. Yeah. <laughs> and you just, like, emailed somebody? Yeah. Like, come let me grow cells for free? Yeah. <laughs> Which I can't believe they did. <laughs> but it was great. <laughs> okay, yeah. So very much on your own, also in your hometown. Not anywhere like that's just me big though. Name. Yeah, some people that's have just done, me. Yeah, yeah, some people have done more, tried harder. Yeah, because I grew cells and I was like, wow, I love my little cells. They're so cool. But I also never want to do research again, <laughs> like lab research. Yeah. So I okay. stopped looking for lab research after that. So then, do you feel like it's a detriment? that you haven't really done much in the labs at Minerva, or do you feel like it doesn't really affect your personal goals? Science at Minerva. The point is, I came into Minerva not really knowing what I wanted to study. I knew vaguely I wanted to study biology because I'd had a a good experience in high school with it. Yeah. And then, like, after first year, I was like, this is... I haven't studied science at all. (laughs) This is fake. I've had... Some really cool science classes. I would say I really loved 154 and 164, but compared to my friends at other universities studying biology or chemistry, like, we're not studying the same thing. It's yeah. an entirely different academic experience, which is, I think, actually good for me because I didn't really want to do that kind of science. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that when I started, but I was looking for a more liberal arts experience subconsciously. Nice. And I got it. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) Hello, liberal arts. Yeah. Any other pros slash cons to Minerva Natural Sciences? We're very small. Is that a con? It's both. Because I feel like the con there is just that, like, classes aren't offered every semester. There weren't very many tutorial options. But then it's, like, buddies. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Is that your take, pretty much? We're very small. Yeah, that's my take. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. Is it the smallest? Definitely. Okay. Because age is not that big either. Yeah, we might fight age. I feel like you guys might be a little smaller than us. I think so. Because I think more people double major in Mm -hmm. age and then like SS or something. Yeah. Maggie, enthusiastic liberal arts scientist. (laughs) (laughs) Accurate description, yeah. Cool. 